In the last video, we defined the binary logistic regression model. And we also decided that we were going to use maximum likelihood estimation to fit the parameters of the model. This is equivalent to using the negative log likelihood as our loss function. We then went on and actually derived an expression for the loss function in terms of the parameters. In this video, we're now going to actually look at how we can minimize the loss with respect to the parameters. So here I've just repeated the loss function from the previous video. We're minimizing the negative log likelihood of the parameters, and that's equivalent to minimizing for this binary logistic regression model, minimizing this loss function here. This is the output of our model, the sigmoid of the parameter vector transpose times the input um, feature vector. Here we've got one minus the output of our model for negative examples. To minimize this loss, we need the gradients of the loss function with respect to the parameter vector w. Using our vector and matrix derivatives from before, we can actually show that the partial derivatives of the loss function with respect to w reduces to a relatively simple equation, which is just negative the sum over all your training items, the label of each item minus the output of the model for that training item multiplied by the feature vector for that item. So I won't go through all of the steps in order to calculate these gradients, but right at the end of the video, I do show a complete slide where we go from this loss function. We'll just call that function, um, we'll just give it a label and call it equation one. How we go from this loss function and actually from the loss function calculate the gradients. Now, in linear regression, what we did was we got an expression for the gradients and then we just um, set that to zero, right? Um, in order to find the minimum. You can try and do that in this case, but you will actually see that you can't find a close form solution for the optimal setting of W as we could in linear regression. And that means we need to use some other approach in order to find the optimal values of W. Here there are multiple um, options. If you've done a course on optimization, there are a number of gradient-based methods where you can basically plug in this expression for the gradients and um, you plug in your training set and out pops a vector W, the optimal setting. Here specifically, um, we're going to use gradient descent. Um, and gradient descent works in this way where you start with some random w and then you update the w's so what you do is you start with some uh, initial guess and then you subtract um, the learning rate times the gradient of w and you set that to the new value of w um, that obviously didn't make sense it was one quick sentence and if you've never heard about gradient descent before then that definitely didn't make sense. So it's important to pause here and go and watch the video on gradient descent. So let's actually do binary logistic regression on the iris data set, the one that we started out with. Um, as a reminder, we've turned the iris data set into just a binary classification task where we're trying to classify whether an iris is a virginica or whether it's not a virginica. And if you do that, if you run gradient descent on this data set with a reasonable learning rate, then this is the output from the model. This line is what's called the decision boundary. It basically says on this side of the boundary, I'm going to classify everything as positive, And on this side, I'm going to classify everything as negative. And we see that here with gradient descent on this data set, we get a fairly good fit of our binary logistic regression model. I'll definitely talk more in a future video about this decision boundary. So here I just wanted to summarize basically everything that we've done up to now with binary logistic regression. We've defined a prediction function where we have similar to linear regression, a weight vector multiplied by a feature vector, which we then squash to basically get outputs between zero and one. We interpret the output of our model as a probability for being in the positive class. And 
to figure out how to set this parameter vector, we use maximum likelihood estimation, which is the equivalent of minimizing the negative log likelihood. The negative log likelihood, you basically take the product of the probabilities for each of the items in your training set, the label of each item given the input feature vector. And you can express that in this way, where here we've got the label for the nth item that can either be zero or one. And this is the output of the model. This is for if you have a positive um, example where y is equal to one, then you will have this term. If you have a negative example where y is equal to zero, then this term will fall away. And then you've got one minus zero. So that's one. And then you're just left with this term. And in this video, we saw that you can actually calculate the gradient of this loss function. And that gives you this uh, answer here. And to then find the optimal parameters of W, you can use this gradient in an optimization approach like gradient descent to give you a good decision boundary. In the next video, we will also look at this decision boundary in a little bit more detail. And one thing you will see in that video is that the parameter vector W is actually, you can look at it as a vector in your feature space, which is orthogonal to your decision boundary. And we'll look at that in the next video. So here on this slide, I just show how you actually calculate the gradients. It's a little bit involved. It's not that complicated, but you need to go through the steps and you can do so on your own. This equation one here, this refers to the loss function given on the first slide. And to go through the steps, it's actually useful to not work with the labels that zero or one directly, but to make a small substitution so that you get labels which are minus one or one. And basically you can go through these steps and in the end what we do is we then basically substitute in back in a expression in terms of the labels um, 0 or 1 and that gives you the partial derivatives like this.